the terror can be seen in what remains and what's been left behind. Signs of panic, of violence, a massacre. More than 200 hostages are kidnapped across southern Israel in the October 7th terror attack. Most are taken from four kibbutzim and the Supernova Music Festival. Among them is 26-year-old Noah Argamani, one of the first faces of the hostage crisis that will shape the coming war. After nearly two months of relentless bombardment of Gaza in response to the attack, a ceasefire deal is reached. The terms of the deal are specific. Israeli women and children released in exchange for Palestinian women and children held in Israeli prisons. Over seven days in late November, more than 100 hostages are freed. But by the eighth day, the ceasefire has abruptly ended in Gaza with deadly fighting resuming. But many women remain in captivity. The U.S. and Israel say it's Hamas's refusal to release this specific group that derails the ceasefire. What leads to the deal finally falling apart? Hamas reneged. It had agreed to a list of names and it suddenly couldn't provide these people or didn't want to provide these people. <laughs> Noah Argamani is one of those women, still held after her abduction from the Supernova Festival, the all-night dance party, attacked by Hamas. NBC News reviewed photographs, text messages, and used mapping tools to reconstruct the moment of Noah's kidnapping, trying to understand why she still hasn't been freed, what her story tells us about the fate of the remaining hostages, and the future of the war raging around them. This is the place now I used to go to get some peace, some quiet. She liked this place very much. Noah's close friends, Bar, Noah, and Jan, take us to a ridge above Beersheba. Gaza is just over 20 miles away. Israeli aircraft roar overhead. She is so close and yet so far. She was like the best friend ever. She always saw the best in people. Everybody liked her. That's why she was like, no, not was she, he's like a glue of uh, all the friends. Was Noah excited about the Nova Festival? I think she, uh, she wasn't sure if she will go. And it was like a spontaneous uh, thing. Around 6.30 a.m. on October 7th, the skies over the Supernova Festival fill with rockets. But to Noah and other festival goers, the scale of the attack is not yet clear. At 7.46 a.m., Noah's friend texts this photo saying they're safe. But 20 minutes later, fear is starting to spread. We are here at the parking lot staying put. An hour later, Noah sends her location, with hope that somebody will come and save us. At 9.24 a.m., three hours into the attack, Noah's boyfriend, Avinatan Orr, sends this photo. Noah is huddled on the ground, hiding. It's the last known picture before they're kidnapped. It's crazy here. Avinatan's friend texts that no one's answering at Israel's equivalent of 911. He replies, F try asking again. They are finding people one by one and killing them. Noah's final text message is at 10.27 a.m. We don't have a car. What does that mean? Avi Natan's friend keeps texting. Give me a sign, bro. I'm begging you. Give me something, Avi Natan. Something. Please. After hours of silence, a video appears online. 
the first video that I saw was uh, Noah's drinking water. So I was like, oh, she's okay. So there's nothing to worry about. We didn't know if maybe she's in Israel, in the border, in the house or something. But then they see this video. I think 10 minutes after we saw the kidnapped video, this was uh, like a nightmare. I remember that I was in my car in the parking lot. I was just sitting and, and re-watching it a million times, over and over. What do you see in her face when you watch that video? I would say she was uh, frightened to death. You can see it on, on her eyes, the way she, she cried for help. An NBC News analysis of Noah's kidnapping video suggests it was filmed on this road here, half a mile from the supernova site. This location has a field and tree line, like the ones over Noah's shoulder. And the buildings in the distance appear to be the nearby Kibbutz Reim, when matched to satellite imagery. Shadows cast by the sun appear to be in keeping with the timing of Noah's last text message. It suggests they were heading southeast along this dirt road before disappearing into Gaza. For the next seven weeks, Gaza echoes with the sounds of war. For Palestinians, a staggering death toll. Now, more than 18,000 dead, according to the Hamas-run health ministry, mainly women and children and growing every day. But on the fate of Noah, there's only silence. This is the worst situation because you want to stay with hope, but you don't know anything. Were you hopeful she would come out during the ceasefire? We were hoping that if not tom today, then tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, she, we felt that Noah is with us, you know? It's like we saw her with us again. You can just see it behind a, a glass but you cannot quite touch it yet. Across Israel, fear is growing for the remaining hostages, and alongside it, anger among hostage families, much of it aimed at the Israeli government. In a leaked recording, verified by NBC News, a freed hostage confronts Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. <laughs> When you're negotiating with a group like Hamas, it's not clear that they are prepared to release all the hostages. I mean, our goal is to get everyone released. Hamas isn't going to release hostages because they've suddenly become humanitarians. They will only release hostages when they feel compelled to do so. And the military pressure worked in the past, it can hopefully work in the future. What is the alternative? There isn't one. What we hear over and over again is they want the hostages to be the priority, not destroying Hamas. And they feel like the government is prioritizing destroying Hamas. From our perspective as a government, yes, we see no contradiction between the goal of defeating Hamas, destroying Hamas, and getting the hostages out. We wanted to understand, why did Hamas release mothers, children, even some men, but not Noah and the young women around her? In Washington, the State Department offered one theory. It seems one of the reasons they don't want to turn women over that they've been holding hostage, and the reason this pause fell apart, is they don't want those women to be able to talk about what happened to them during their time in custody. Does the Israeli government have any information that supports that? We fear for the state of the hostages. Anyone who saw what Hamas was capable of on October 7th, the sort of violence, whether it's the beheadings, the burning of people alive, the rapes. NBC News has reviewed evidence suggesting dozens of Israeli women were raped, sexually assaulted, or mutilated on October 7th. Some freed hostages say they also suffered sexual abuse while in captivity, according to a group representing families. NBC News has not been able to independently confirm that. But there's another potential explanation for why Noah wasn't released. Two Israeli military officials told us the first wave of attackers at the music festival were heavily armed members of Hamas's elite commando unit, the Nukba. But in the hours that followed, thousands of other Gazans, among them gangs and militants, also poured into Israel. 
The men grabbing Noah and Avi Natan don't appear to be armed. They're not wearing tactical gear. An Israeli military official told us they appear to be part of the mob, not Hamas fighters. In the video of Noah in Gaza, she appears to be in an ordinary house. What looks like two barefoot women walk past. It's very different from Hamas's official hostage videos, which are deliberately designed not to give clues about their location. The evidence suggests Noah was not kidnapped by Hamas. They may not have her or even know where she is. Israel's government has said at least 20 hostages are dead, but Noah's name does not appear on their official list. Hamas has claimed that an unspecified number of hostages were killed by Israeli strikes, but they've never provided evidence. Though, in that leaked recording, the freed hostage says those strikes put them in danger. The Israeli military has since said it mistakenly killed three hostages in northern Gaza. While more than 100 hostages remain in captivity, stories from those freed have only heightened fears. Some were treated very badly, did not get medical attention, were neglected, were actually tortured. It's agony for the families of all the remaining hostages, each with their own worries about time running out. But for Noah's family, time is especially short. Noah's mom is dying. Yes. And you worry if she might pass away and Noah will still be inside. This is our nightmare. We don't know when she'll be out. And uh, we do know that Noah's mom uh, is on a ticking clock. I hope that this is the ending that Leora, her mother, deserves to see her child, to hug her child and Noah getting a chance to say goodbye. Noah, I need to say goodbye. I need to say goodbye. This is a notebook we made for Noah. This is Noah in Hebrew. The idea is that when she will come back, we know maybe she will need uh, her zone, her quiet. So she will have the words of us, of yeah. her friends, and get strong and know she's not, not alone. For communities here, time violently stopped. Empty chairs, houses that aren't homes, life unable to restart without the missing on the far side of the fence. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.